Hi, this is Sabrin from fu4all.com and in this uh, Fortran tutorial we'll talk about subroutines. That's something extremely uh, useful in order to compute uh, some repetitive things. So basically, you, you know probably that if you do some code you will need functions, you will need to calculate the same kind of things over and over again. So that's what subroutines are made for. So Let's start and um, in this tutorial I'll show you a small program to calculate the difference between the volume of two spheres. So uh, let's enter first into my folder and okay that I have on my desktop and let's create a new file. So I'm using Emacs again and I'll call that Vols F95. Okay, so uh, program, let's give it the name, vols, and let's end the program right away, vols. So what this program should do, let's write it. This program calculates the difference between the volume of two spheres. Okay, so the first thing to do is to uh, use implicit none and also to declare the variables. So what variable will I have in this program? So I'll have uh, the, the radius. I'll ask the user to give me two radius. Uh, uh, I think it's called ready when there are two, so to ready and uh, to give me the and then the program will output the volume and calculate the volume of the sphere using those two ready and then make the difference. So I need uh, let's use double precision variables. So I need rad one, rad two, and the result will be vol one and vol two. Uh, that's it. So now uh, let's focus on uh, calculating. So first I need to, to tell the user please enter those. So let's do a print. Please enter uh, rad1 and rad2. That's it. And then we will read the content of what the user enters and we will put that into red the red one and red two um, and then that's when we need to to make the subroutine to uh, calculate so for the moment i'll just write um, uh, calculate the volume uh, of vo so the volumes vol1 and vol2 okay so I'll suppose that I done that I'll show you right after how to do it uh, and and the result should be uh, I will print out uh, let's say print out uh, the difference is and then uh, I'll use uh, absolute value so absolute of volume 1 minus volume 2. So now I miss, I'm missing this part in between. So that's where subroutine enter in place. So subroutine are not defined inside the program, they are defined outside. So I need to go after the end program uh, vols. So I can separate like that if I want with the comment. Uh, and I just write like, like I did with the program subroutine then I give it the name volume and then I'll have to define the arguments so rad and vol and I'll end the subroutine volume okay in the same way than the program now the thing is that um, a subroutine is like another program inside the program so I need to again define also implicit none 
and I need to uh, define the variables as well. Uh, double precision. So don't forget that in my main program the variable rad and vol are defined as double precision. So I should define double precision also in my subroutine. If I define them as real inside subroutine, I'll get problems. Rad and vol. Uh, and I need a third one with, which is pi. So I need to calculate pi in order to uh, calculate the volume of the sphere because you all know the formula. 4 divided by 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius uh, at the cubic uh, power. So uh, let's now, so pi, let's calculate it. So when I say calculate, it means simply that I'm using the formula 4 uh, and then I'm using a function arctangent uh, 1. Uh, and you know that the, the result of this function for, for arctangent 1 is pi. So, um, so that's a way to calculate. And now let's calculate the volume. And um, volume will be equal to 4. So you notice that I'm putting a small dot because I'm using a double precision number. I don't want it to consider as an uh, integer constant. So pi multiplied by the radius at the cubic power. So that's it for the subroutine. I'm, I'm, and you see that what is a bit uh, particular is that we are maybe in other kind of code like Python or like something. We are uh, accustomed to have uh, we are to have only input variables in this section here. So uh, those are input and then at the end you have a return and it gives out the return of the function. Well, uh, you can actually also do that in Fortran. So that's called, you can also define a function. So I could, uh, I could do like that instead of subroutine, I'm writing function. Then I remove the vol here and I will do a return vol. So, uh, not really a return, there is no return keyword, but I, I could do simply vol equal in this. Um, but the advantage of subroutine is that it can calculate several uh, values. So I could calculate several outputs out of uh, one input, for example. So that's quite, um, quite useful. So you have the input and you have the output in the same uh, array here. So that's why it, it may, may sound a bit um, particular if you never saw this kind of syntax. So that's why I'm talking about it. Okay, so um, now how do we integrate that into a program? Well, we use call. Call volume, so that's where I'm calling my subroutine and I'm feeding it with my radius one and I want it to, uh, to, to give out the vol one as the result of the calculation. And we do the same with uh, rad2 and vol2, basically. So we, we calculate two times. So what um, Fortran is doing is that when it starts to read this first line, uh, it automatically jumps to uh, the subroutine here, uh, and then it starts to calculate inside the subroutine, uh, it calculates the vol, and then it attach the result to the variable vol1. Uh, and it does the same here for call2. So that's what it does. Okay, so my program I think is um, okay. So let's just uh, save it. And let's, um, let's compile that. So again, uh, let's open a new window and let's open the shell inside. I love this function to be able to open the shell directly in the text format. Um, now the output name of my program will be vols and the program I'm compiling is vols.f95. Okay, compiled and now let's, so now it does what I want it. Please enter, oh, uh, read, I mean read 1 and read 2. 
Okay, so 12, 23, and the difference is, okay, so it's, uh, it's, it works, basically it works. You saw that uh, it called the subroutine and it calculated uh, the result. Now, um, I want to just to improve a bit this program in two ways, uh, just to show you a few more things you can do. Um, so first of all, uh, I'll use, let, let's format a bit this uh, thing. But you see that uh, I talked about formatting in the previous video, um, but this time I have a string plus a number. So how do you uh, format that? Okay, so let's start by using the formatting function right uh, and giving it a number like 10, for example. And then we have to uh, 10 format and um, as we have two uh, we have two two parts in this uh, this uh, writing so we have the string the difference is and we have the value so in the format uh, you have to write it like a comma so for the the string we don't uh, touch it so we just write a uh, and then we write the kind of format we want for uh, the apps volume 1 minus volume 2. Okay. At the same time, just correct this small uh, typing mistake. Okay, now uh, let's see if it works. Twelve twenty-three, and it works. So you see that now my uh, my number has been formatted uh, and let's do another small thing is that what if I have a lot of values to compute and I don't want to launch every time the script so I want it to uh, to do over and over uh, this calculation until uh, I decide to stop so how would I do that um, well you can use a do and a do loop so and so do and at the end here we will do and do but now there's a problem is that it will just cycle infinitely so it will never stop so that's quite uh, dangerous so we want to give the user uh, the possibility to stop so um, by pressing key for example so how do we do that print uh, and then let's tell it um, or maybe we'll we'll ask him if you want to continue pre uh, press a key. So uh, run again uh, and then press Y for yes. Uh, otherwise, press any key. Okay. And now we need to to take in account what the user did. So we will read uh, read what he inputs and put it into a variable called response. So I have no variable called response, so I'll have to uh, define it, of course, in in uh, in this area here. So uh, it will be a character. response okay uh, so it will read and put it into response variable and now we have to do a if so if my response is different uh, from from y then uh, it will stop so I'm using the short way to write the if statement uh, and let's take in account also the fact that you know maybe the user will use small y instead instead of uh, a capital Y, so we can end. So the end must have two dots uh, is on on both sides, and response is different from small y. Okay, and I think it should do it. So let's say that and let's just compile again. Twelve twenty 
12, 23. Okay, so it calculates and then it asks me, so press Y for yes, otherwise press any key. So if I'm pressing Y, well, you see it starts, it starts again and calculate. And if I press any other key, it just stops. So that's uh, a nice way to, to have a script in Fortran calculating some things for you. Okay, so that's all for this uh, video. I hope you learned a lot and uh, see you very soon on the blog. Bye. So if you're on YouTube, you'll probably find the link to the article and the next videos inside the description. Otherwise, you can go on my blog, fe4all.com, uh, and click in the category open source FEA and you'll find all the articles I wrote about uh, open source FEA and the previous videos inside this category. So thank you for watching. I hope that you learned a lot and that you will learn a lot using all the videos that I am sharing on my blog. So if you like those videos, please help me to share them with your friends and other engineers. And also please let me know what you think in the comments. It's always great to have some kind of feedback and if you have some ideas of things you would like to learn or do with FEA, please also let me know. Thank you for watching again.